Hi, I'm Maddie and I'm one of the tutors for the Oxbridge Group. Um, I've spent the past three years at Cambridge studying natural sciences, uh, taking modules to do with biology and chemistry, and I'm about to start my fourth year at Cambridge studying um, for an integrated master's and specialising in chemistry. Um, I'm going to talk you through my personal statement, which I wrote around this time of year, four years ago, when I was going through the admissions process, process myself. Um, hopefully this will be helpful to anyone who might be applying for any science related degrees at the moment, um, but in particular anyone looking to apply for natural sciences at Cambridge. So a little bit about me. Um, I actually applied exclusively for natural sciences degrees, so all five of the unis that I applied to I chose to apply for natural sciences there. Um, I think this really helped me in writing my personal statement because I, well, as you see later, I talked very specifically about the degree format and how that appealed to me. Um, and I kind of tried to emphasise how keen I was to carry on studying more than one science. So carry on all my A-levels, basically. Um, and I kind of said how I thought the natural sciences programme would perfectly suit me. Um, I thought I'd quickly mention my A-levels were biology, chemistry, maths and further maths, which is a pretty common combination, to be honest, for natural sciences at Cambridge. Um, if you're doing the biological side, if you're going for the physical side, lots of people will have physics, chemistry, double maths. Um, so, yeah, like I said, I ended up in the kind of like biological natural sciences stream, um, even though I've ended up specialising in chemistry. Um, so I completed my application towards the end of 2019. I probably started preparing for Cambridge at the end of the summer holidays and the start of year 13. So this exact time of year, basically. Um, this is when I started writing my personal statement so that in the first month or so of school uh, I had plenty of time to ask my teachers for feedback and kind of go back and forth with them. Um, how many drafts? Overall I probably worked with four or five uh, but like this number can really vary it just depends how many changes you're going to make at a time you know that's completely up to you. Some people will have a really gradual slow process and they'll chip away at it every like work on it every day Others, you might like to leave it for a week and then change a whole paragraph in one sitting. You just need to work out what works best for you. Um, it took me a, probably a good few weeks of work to get to my final draft, but I definitely wasn't working on it every day. You know, I'd leave it for a good amount of time between each draft. Um, so I quite liked coming back with fresh eyes each time. Um, you'll often notice things that you didn't notice before if you've left it for a while and you might come up with new ideas. Um, okay, so let's have a read through my personal statement. I'm going to go through it a paragraph at a time. So one paragraph will come up um, on a slide at a time. Let's dive right in. Um, so this is my first paragraph. I'm not going to read them all out to you. Um, you can feel free to pause the video and read through it if you'd like. Um, but I would say I think it's really important to make sure you have a strong, interesting first paragraph. Uh, especially your first sentence, because this is going to just set the tone for the rest of your statement. I was really happy with my first paragraph in the end. I think it's one of my strongest, um, but it definitely took me a while to get this point. You know, I didn't just bang this out on my first sitting. So don't worry if you're not happy with what you get the first time round. Um, so the whole paragraph is very specific to the natural sciences degree. So I start by stressing how modern day science is kind of breaking down the traditional boundaries of science. Um, I quite like how my first statement is, sorry, my first sentence is a statement. Um, I think that's quite like, I think it draws you in a bit. Um, it's not super long, super complicated. It's just a short um, statement, which is related to the degree. Um, I would stick to something simple for your first sentence. Um, then apart from that, I'd say I've done quite a good job of kind of conveying my enthusiasm for the subject. Um, which is also really important, you know, your um, interview or your the people reading this want to see that you're actually interested in the, the degree, you know, they want, they want you to want to do it. Um, so I've mentioned about the prospect of potentially carrying out my own research someday. Um, and I've also just talked about how I've enjoyed my A-levels. Um, and I think it comes across as genuine in this paragraph. Uh, like I said before, I specifically described the natural sciences degree because I was applying for that at all five of my choices. Um, if you're applying for straight sciences at some and natural sciences at others, obviously don't do this. Um, 
because it will just flag to people that you're not their first choice basically if you're applying for straight chemistry at them but you're talking about natural sciences so just make sure to be consistent with who you're applying to um, but if you are applying for natural sciences everywhere I personally found it quite nice to talk about it specifically and mention the degree by name um, yeah so next paragraph uh, so in here I mentioned the first book that I read which is called The Selfish Gene. It's very famous. Um, I'd say it definitely falls into the category of popular science. So if you're going to use this book or a similar level book, I wouldn't rely on it too much because lots of people are likely to have read it, most of the people applying. Um, but I'd say that I genuinely found a lot of the stuff in it really interesting, which is why I decided to include it. Um, because I knew I'd be happy to discuss it and, you know, if it got brought up in interview. Um, and I thought that my enthusiasm, it would be easier to portray my enthusiasm in the personal statement if I was talking about something that genuinely did interest me, which it did. Um, and in the end, my interview did, interviewer did actually ask me about this stuff. Um, and he seemed pretty interested in it as well. And we ended up having a really interesting conversation about it in the end. So I think it paid off. So definitely don't be scared to include something that you think a lot of people will have read if you genuinely found it really interesting. You know, a lot of people will have read it for a reason because it's a good book. Um, just make sure you give some interesting insight. Don't just say that you've read it. You've got to kind of pick apart the ideas in the book um, and justify why you found it interesting instead of just saying that you do. Um, another bit of advice I'd have is don't just name drop or list off books. That doesn't really like that won't do anything for you. Anyone can list off a load of science books that they may or may not have read um, by just listing them off. Who's to say you have read them? Um, and also anyone can read books. You know, they want you to read them, but also be interested in them. And they want these books to provoke, um, be thought provoking for you, basically. Um, so if you can show that you've read them, found them interesting and had to think about them after, that's what they really want from you. So just expand on every book that you mention. Don't just throw it away in one sentence. Um, and give up your own opinions. That's what they want a lot of the time as well. I get that in science, you know, it's not like reading a politics book where you can, where there aren't right or wrong answers in science. There pretty much is always right or wrong answers. Um, but it's still good to throw in opinions where you can. Um, also, as everyone says, make sure you do finish your books um, if you're going to mention them. Don't get caught out, you know, having just read the first chapter in an interview because that just won't go well. You know, that's a very easy way to unimpress your interviewer. Um, back to the paragraph. I think my last sentence is good. I think it ties together the paragraph quite nicely because um, it does. So the fact that I so I talk about um, a book of Richard Dawkins that I read and found really interesting. I explain why I found it interesting. And then I can also finish off the paragraph by saying how I went to see him speak, um, which kind of not necessarily proves, but it does show that my interest was quite genuine. Um, the two things reinforce each other. You know, I'm not just um, giving a token mention to one thing I did. I kind of followed up on reading this book and went to go see him. Um, although on another note, one thing that I don't think is great about this paragraph, I think this middle sentence, I personally had never fully understood the concept of worker bees being willing to sacrifice their own reproduction, blah, blah, blah. I think it seems a bit superficial. Um, like, I had personally never understood this. Why, like, I guess you might think, why would you be thinking, you know, it's quite a niche thing to be thinking about, to be, to have, to claim to have never understood, you know, maybe a better thing to have said might have been I'd never really thought about this or like on hearing about it um it seemed quite conflicting so I like how I said it seemed the perfect counterexample for his theory until his explanation enlightened me which it did and that's true and I was very willing to go into that in my interview and explain why it seemed a counterexample and how his explanation solved it and you know meant that it fitted into his theory um, but I don't think, I think that sentence is a bit waffly, basically. Uh, okay, next paragraph. Um, so in this one, I mention a slightly more like gritty science book, um, a bit more dry, a bit less popular science, more the hardcore like mechanisms. 
Um, I think this was important to include, you know, I couldn't just say the selfish gene, whichever other person's read, even though I was interested in it. I think it's important to show that you're willing to like tackle the harder material, um, which is what I think this paragraph showed. Um, the book that I chose quite nicely bridges biology and chemistry, which again sticks to the like natural sciences theme and like um, the idea that I'm trying to convince the reader that I want to carry on learning about both biology and chemistry. This is good kind of evidence for that. Um, but on the other hand, I do think this paragraph's too short. Given how much time I spent kind of waffling on about bees and the selfish gene, I think I could have spent a bit more time talking about these more complex concepts. So I say that I was all I really I don't really offer any insight to be honest I don't expand on the points I just say I was already familiar with this but this was new to me okay cool but like what did you get out of that you know um I found them both fascinating and intricate I did and I'm intrigued by the idea of coupling I was but why and what did I do about that I think that would have been better to include um sentences discussing those things afterwards you know to expand a bit more um, at the moment, the kind of this discussion of the book is quite shallow. I think I could take it a bit further. Um, I've not really justified why I'm interested in these things. Um, so it's, yeah. Um, but apart from that, it was good to mention that I had read the book and I had made sure to read it the whole way through. Um, so a good paragraph, but could be expanded a bit more. Uh, okay, next paragraph. So at this point, I think I talked about my reading enough. So it was definitely time to talk about some more kind of active work I'd done. Um, so for this, I mentioned the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge um, in which I got a gold. Um, this was really great to be able to mention, I think, especially as my first choice uni obviously ended up being Cambridge. Um, they're definitely going to value and like trust the results of a test that they write themselves, aren't they? So it was good to put this in, I think. Um, I don't think it's worth spending too much time on it because they know the tests themselves inside out. They don't need you to tell them what was on it. Um, I've said I particularly enjoyed the unfamiliar concepts of organic chemistry and drawing out large complex molecules. I could maybe mention a specific question because that would show genuine interest and that I have was interested enough to remember it coming out of the exam or challenge. Um, you know, my final sentence is a bit short. Um, I like it's almost like I've thrown in for the sake of it, um, but it would have been better to kind of develop that a bit more. But I still think an uh, important paragraph to include. Um, next, I mentioned another talk that I actually attended. Um, I think this was good to mention because, again, just shows my commitment outside of school to learn. Um, but I do think this paragraph is a bit disproportionately big, to be honest. Um, you know, this wasn't that impressive. Professor Winston is a very famous scientist. Um, lots of people would love to go talk to him. And that doesn't mean they'd necessarily want to do a degree in chemistry. Um, so I think maybe it would have been more worthwhile mentioning this briefly. Um, you know, maybe tagging it in to another paragraph saying I went to see his talk, which I really enjoyed, and then losing um, the kind of aspirations part and instead using those words. Because at the moment I was pretty much sitting at the limit of the word count. Um, I'd have probably been better off using these words in the previous two paragraphs where I said I should have expanded a bit more. Um, so I think definitely once you're working with a draft, just make sure everything's relevant and don't be scared to cut things if they're not because um like I can almost guarantee there'll be places where you haven't expanded as much as you could or maybe should um and it'd be more worthwhile expanding on your points and your ideas and your opinions and your criticisms and justifying why you enjoy things and all of that kind of stuff as opposed to just kind of listing off things you've done at a shallow level um but anyway, I still it's not it's not a bad paragraph, but I think maybe a bit lengthy, unnecessary. So um, next, I talked about some work experience that I completed. Um, if you haven't had the chance to do any, then don't stress at all. It's by no means necessary. Um, you know, I just say focus on things that are within your control, like reading books, attending lectures, 
entering these competitions. Um, but if you do get the chance to do work experience that is relevant, then I would definitely mention it. Um, I was very lucky because my school kind of set aside this whole week for us. Um, I can't quite decide whether I like my comment about um, medicine not being the right degree for me. I think it's quite good to demonstrate that I've considered my options um, and I've actually thought through what I'm applying for, you know. Um, and I like how I went on to stress my interest in scientif scientific mechanisms behind things. Um, but again, it's maybe not really that necessary. Um, you know, you're writing to explain why you want to do natural sciences, not why you don't want to do medicine. Um, but it's, you know, it's still quite relevant. Um, and it was just good to mention the biochemistry department, you know, the, the part I particularly enjoyed during the work experience. Um, and what I did, you know, just to show that I was paying attention at the time, I guess. Um, okay, and then finally, so this is my last kind of the obligatory paragraph that most people do, um, where I just quickly run through some of my less academic orientated interests. Um, so lots of people will follow this format and just kind of stick this paragraph at the end after talking all about course related things. Um, Universities, especially Oxbridge, unfortunately, aren't that interested in your hobbies, really. Um, it's nice to include them and definitely worth a mention to kind of sell yourself as an all-rounded person, but do not spend too much time talking about them. Um, you want to use the majority of your words convincing um, whoever's reading this that, A, you're really interested in science and just show your enthusiasm. Um, B, why their course is like going to be great for you so in this case natural sciences why I really wanted to study that in particular um, and then see you're trying to prove to them you're trying to convince them to accept you onto their course basically um, so you're trying to prove that if they were to that you would do well in it so evidence of you like excelling in these subjects so be that interest in your A-levels reading outside the course doing well in challenges things like that um, so all I did was I mentioned some sports that I enjoyed. I definitely, when I wrote this, it was a lot longer. Um, so this is a paragraph that you can definitely work to cut away at if you're trying to reduce your words because you're over the word count. Um, so don't be scared to cut away words, particularly in this paragraph, um, because again, the, the content isn't that essential. So this is maybe a bit too long. I probably could have kept it a bit shorter. Um, so I just mention a few sports I'm involved in, um, some school responsibilities I had, which to be fair, I think that was useful to mention. Um, so if you've been a house official or a prefect or a head boy or girl or anything kind of like that, even if the actual role wasn't that big of a deal, you can big it up in your personal statement. And I think it's good to throw in um, like some buzzwords like say it improved your teamwork or your time management or your organisation or your leadership skills, you know, something like that. But again, don't spend too long on this, it shouldn't be more than one sentence. Um, and then finally, I just wanted to kind of, to give a well-rounded feel, I steered back to the science a bit and just mentioned how I'd done a bit of tutoring um, and how I enjoy discussing scientific concepts, you know, I just, it's something I find interesting. Uh, so that's my last main paragraph and then at the very end I literally just had one sentence um, again specifically referencing the natural sciences course like I said um, which I think just kind of directs the letter it makes it feel a bit more personal like I'm writing to a person instead of just writing this generic page and sending it off to wherever um, and yeah I just in those words again multiple complementary scientific fields um again just remarking on how um like this overriding theme i had that um multidisciplinary scientists are just becoming more and more important and how i really wanted to stay on that border of biology and chemistry um where i think i have stayed so it's worked well for me um okay so that's the end of my personal statement um I thought I'd do a quick general overview of what I did, you know, overall throughout the whole process. Um, most of this I did mention in my statement, but I thought it'd be good to summarise it here. Um, this And this can maybe act as a bit of a checklist for you. So, like I said, I did some popular science reading, including the selfish gene. 
Um, but more importantly, I progressed from this to read some more sophisticated works, um, which is really important to show your interest and also just your ability to tackle the harder work. Um, so this included the biochemistry book that I mentioned. Um, another book that I didn't mention was, I've got it here actually, uh, Why Do Chemical Reactions Happen? by James Keeler and Peter Wobbers. Um, I would really recommend anyone applying for chemistry. If you're more biology focused, don't worry about it. But if you're interested in applying for, say, chemistry at Oxford or Cambridge Natural Sciences, but with a real like chemistry focus, um, I would definitely read this textbook. Um, I've actually since been taught by, so lectured by both of the authors, which is really cool. They both teach at Cambridge. Um, they might even be interviewing you, depending on which college you apply to. Um, so that's useful in itself. Uh, but on top of that, it's honestly just a really great, like, comprehensive guide on the sort of content that you will be introduced to when you get to university and start studying chemistry. So I would definitely recommend that to everyone. Um, it can be a bit heavy, you know, it is a textbook, it's a bit hard to, you've got to trudge your way through it at times, but it's definitely worthwhile. Um, so beyond that, I also attended a few talks, which I mentioned. Um, I sat all of the science based Olympiads that I could that, you know, that my school had on offer. So the UK Maths Challenge, um, which I, you know, I sat that most years throughout the whole of school. The Biology Olympiad, I think we had in sixth form um, and the Cambridge Chemistry Challenge, which is the only one that I mentioned in my personal statement. Um, I think that was just the most impressive one, to be honest, and the most relevant, given that I was applying to Cambridge. Um, so you don't have to mention everything that you sit. Um, but definitely, you definitely should sit everything that you can. Um, if nothing else, you can kind of see it as practice for the admissions test that you're going to have to sit. Um, because often those questions are of a slightly similar style, you know, the multiple choice bits and things like that. Um, I completed some science-based work experience when I worked in a hospital for a week, which again, I mentioned in my statement. Um, like I said, not essential at all, but if you do get the opportunity to do something like that, then that's great and definitely talk about it. Um, one thing I haven't mentioned yet is just the fact that I made sure not to go over the word limit. Um, I know this seems like such obvious or like trivial advice, but just make sure you don't. It's not worth it. Um, you definitely can for everything you need to say within the limit. Um, and the limit's there for a reason, you know, it helps you write concisely. You don't want to bore the people reading your statement. You want to get to the point, you know. Um, and last but not least, and honestly, I'd say my biggest piece of advice in general is just focus on your A-levels. Um, especially if you're taking four, you know, you're going to be very busy. Um, just make sure you stay on top of them. Uh, like, above all else, Oxbridge care that you do well in your exams at the end of the day. Um, they want you to be interested in your um subjects and they want you to like read around and go to these talks and everything but if you don't do well in your a-levels at the end of the day then they won't be interested um so yeah if you're lucky enough to get invited to interview and then offered a place it will be a high offer so just stay on top of your a-levels from day one and then you should be fine to meet the offer whatever offer that they give you um also just the more work that you put into your a-levels you know, the more time you spend learning about, talking about, reading about your subject, um, the more familiar you'll be with it and the more comfortable you'll be talking about your subjects at interview. And that will show, you know, if you're confident. Um, yeah, so that's pretty much it. That's most of what I have to say. Feel free to rewatch this and pause on particular slides to read the paragraphs. Um, but other than that, all I have to say is good luck and I hope everything goes well for you. Thank you for watching. Goodbye.